Hello everyone. In this video, uh, in this lab, uh, we will be working with Amazon RDS service. Um, now Amazon RDS uh, is um, a service, you know, if you go to the console, it's uh, it will be right under storage, one of the core services uh, offered by Amazon and um, stands for Relational Database Service. Um, and one thing to know is that it is um, hosted on top of EC2s. So um, the RDS uses EC2s to host your stuff. So a few of the things are very similar to EC2s. Uh, and the question comes, why use, um, a lot of people ask, why use RDS um, instead of just install a SQL server or MySQL on on an EC2 instance. And I found a really good blog. Um, uh, here's a link, you can check it out yourself. And this image kind of um, summarizes why would you want to use e, um, you know, RDS compared to EC2 instances. Um, the main, instant, main, main advantage of uh, RDS is uh, it's easy to provision easy to manage, uh, especially if you don't have people really good with managing and, um, you know, administ uh, administration part of databases. It's really easy to get started with RDS. Plus, it's easy to uh, do stuff like read replicas, multi uh, AZ instances, backups, and um, uh, scalability of IOPS and that kind of stuff and also minor patches and upgrades are done by Amazon if you choose RDS and EC2 you know if you choose EC2 it is um, uh, well the limitations of RDS is that you usually pay a bit more uh, around 20 to 30 percent uh, compared to EC2s but you know you have to balance it out and you have to weigh it out well, whichever fits your need and some people will be better off with MySQL um, on top of EC2 and some people will be better off just using RDS service provided by AWS and you can have a look uh, into this blog if you want um, it's um, but in this in this lab our main purpose is to deploy uh, an RDS um, instance and have it talk to one of our web applications uh, web servers and you know manipulate some of the data and I'm gonna be following a guide for uh, that's provided from um, Amazon Web Services uh, okay so uh, this is the blog that I'm that I'll be following once again and I will be posting the link for this blog on the description below so you can follow along this or my video, whichever you prefer. Um, um, so the first thing we will do is to go to uh, our RDS page. And I'm gonna say get started now with, I'm gonna select my MySQL, that's, that's the one we will be using. And select dev test because this is just a lab. Uh, now, this one, select T2 Micro. Now, like I said earlier, you know, RDS is based, built upon EC2. So, T2 Micro, you can, uh, you can see it's like EC2, T2 Micro, and this is a free tier, so we choose this. Multi-AZ, no, because this is just a lab. Uh, now, identifier, I'm gonna say tutorial, one, two, three. Everything is gonna be the same. Tutorial one, two, three in every, all four boxes. I'm gonna say next. Okay, now in this part, VPC, you need to have a VPC that you built, not the default, that has a public and a private subnet. Now I just made a video on how to make a VPC with public and private subnet. You can check that out if you haven't um, if you don't have one already, you can also um, find how to do that on the link I'll be posting on the description, whichever you prefer. Um, 
in the submit group choose my group this is the one we made publicly accessible no availability zone no preference uh, security group okay we're gonna choose web ssh but i'm gonna make sure i come back and verify this because this is this will mess stuff up you know i've had instances where i wouldn't have connection to my database and the problem was the security group is configured wrongly so make be very careful with this and we're going to visit this back after we launch this database name tutorial one two three port everything is good uh, we don't need backup so let's say zero and everything else is good now i'm going to make sure one more time okay so i'm going to launch perfect now i'm going to say view and like i said earlier what I'm going to do is I'm going to say instance actions and see details. And I'm going to verify that the security group Okay, so this is a security group and inbound I want to see is HTTP SSH and Okay, so um what I wanted to do was have this security group be the source of my all the traffic that I have now you know for for easiness if you want this to be easy then just put zero 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 dot zero um, but what I'm doing here is I am using my security group that has um, let me show you my all my security groups so my web uh, SSH security group So these are my security groups. Right, so my web, my web SSS security group has these three ports open. I'm going to use this for my web server later on in this video, but for for my RDS well, the one I have, Web SSH. For the inbound, I have all traffic from source, Web SSH, which means only the instances having this security group can access my RDS database. So I hope that is clear. Uh, one more time, this security group you can have security group as a source for the traffic instead of an IP or uh, like here it says you can have IP or range or a security group as a source and if you have a security group as a source only the instances with that security group will be able to access whatever you are tr trying to yeah, have a security uh, group on so with that um, this will take a bit of time and we are going to launch EC2 instance for our web server. Now this is the step two of this tutorial in the Amazon blog. I'm gonna go to step two and start making an instance. Okay, so launch instance. Um, it's going to be Amazon Linux. Click on next on the network click on my VPC that's the one I made submit is going to be um, public because it's a web server and everything else should be good let me check one more time yeah so auto assign is enabled IP we definitely need an IP address at storage this is good name tag um, my new server Okay, 
and I'm going to select an existing security group and Okay, this should be good. Review and launch. And just to make sure, I got SSH and HTTP in here. So review and launch. Launch. Uh, I already have a key pair, so I'm gonna say download. If you don't have a key pair, make a new one and download. Okay. And this is my instance. It's going to take a while to give me the public IP, but it's going to be faster than the RDS instance. It's going to RDS instances take quite a while, maybe four to five minutes to get set up. But mine is already available. That's good. I'm going to go to my EC2 dashboard. And if you remember, my new server is the one I just made and it's still initializing but it should have an IP I'm gonna copy this IP and go to my terminal window okay now I'm going to I'm gonna to try to log into this now if you have a Windows machine you will need to use putty um, or if uh, yeah if you have a Linux or a Mac then you can follow along this is the terminal uh, I'm gonna put SSH EC2 user. This is the username of Amazon Linux AMI uh, instances at IP address. Okay, I'm having trouble, which means I probably messed up in my security group. And that's a lesson again. So I'm going to quickly go to my um, security group oh yep yep just gonna create a new one so web and SSH right web okay add rule add rule I'm gonna say SSH I'm gonna say SDP zero Go to my my new web server networking gen security groups and this is the one I just made so assign okay now this means I have to change my um, my thing in my RDS instance too because I just changed the security group of my EC2 now the the security group that I use for my EC2 has to be the source of RDS access so quickly go to my RDS security group inbound edit and in this I'm gonna say web I'm gonna have to find that Um, so I'm gonna copy this Um, okay, this is getting messy, so I'm gonna first of all close. I'm sorry, guys, this is a bit messy, um, but here is my security group right here. Okay, so back to this, I'm going to change the inbound rules, edit, 
and have this as oh my goodness web and SSH this one okay so I'm in and the first thing I will be doing is um, installing few things from um, from my from the blog that I'm looking at and I'll post this on description you can do the same thing or you can just watch me do it so I just installed three things HTTP web server Apache web server um, and SQL dependencies that need uh, to be there to be able to talk to the database instance that we just created okay and we are going to start the server and the next command is going to make sure that the server is started when we restart the computer okay and we are going to create a group called www and we will add the current user to the group with this command I'm quickly gonna exit and log back in and I am going to check my groups with the group command www is right here awesome now I'm going to give that group permission to um, I mean ownership of var slash www which is the web server uh, folder enter and I'm going to change permissions on that folder with this command and I'm going to give permissions with this for on the directories and with this command on the files now these four commands you know um, are for permissions and that kind of stuff and it's all on the blog that I'll be posting so don't worry if you don't understand this um, we're just trying to connect database to our web server and now we now we will um, change we will navigate into this folder www and we will uh, make a directory called inc okay and we will create a file called db info finally we are on our way to connect the database okay and enter press i to insert and we will insert this piece of code that I copied from the blog and everything in here is going to be tutorial123 same thing here hmm. now the endpoint is going to be if you go to your MySQL instance the first thing you'll see is on top is this endpoint and this URL with the port number at the end so copy this and go back here and paste that okay and escape colon WQ to save enter say I um, mean exclamation mark and enter this is how you save stuff in VIM Vim um, now change directory to slash var slash dub 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 uh, HTML oops okay CD 
slash var slash www.html. Perfect. Now we will be making a new file vim sample page dot php because we are working with php now we in the dependencies we installed was php dependencies so we will be working with php and like in the db info had php code in there so enter i again and this piece of code that i'm going to copy is also in the blog and you don't need to modify anything that's the best part about this one and um save and close okay now we should be set okay if we did everything properly we should be good to go but i'm just going to add um one little thing in here i'm going to say echo and you can this is optional but i'm going to say h1 this is some html tags hello welcome to the page navigate to and uh, put it in, in file called index.php enter okay so if you ls you have two files we just made two files sample page okay now what we will do is we will navigate to our ec2 instance now find the ip this is the ip okay there you go. So, hello, welcome to the page. I'm Mr. E. Navigate to sample page PHP for entering your info. Now, this is the endpoint of this is the IP address of our web server. Um, sample page dot PHP is the page, and we are having a problem. I'm going to quickly Google what this problem is. Okay, I'm, I'm guessing this could be... Um, an issue with the security group for some reason I don't know I have uh, I've had a lot of problems just because of the security groups and it's uh, it's just awful and we're gonna try to do this thing if it le if this thing lets us I don't know if they will, they will let us do this but oh it did so let me make sure this works and I'll explain what I just did Oh, okay. So somehow we forgot to save the um, DB info, of course. All right, so there's no this. Let's go back again and save and make sure we save it this time.
guys you need to be good at troubleshooting stuff because you will always run into times when you don't know what's going on and it's always a good habit to you know try to troubleshoot efficiently fast Okay, I hope this will make it work and we will need the endpoint one more time. Okay, so let's try this now. Woo, nice, as you can see. I'm going to say, this is my name, I'm going to say 444 King Street, Maryland, USA. There we go. I'm going to say Tom, uh, White House, Road, Maryland. Two zero nine zero three. There we go. So what's happening is our web page is storing data, and this data is being stored in the web server. So if we close this, right? If I start a new tab and go back, then this will still be there because it's in the database, and this part of the code is pulling stuff from database and displaying it over here. So this is how you uh, connect your database RDS instance to your web server. And if we go back, all the way back, then what we did was we created uh, an EC2 instance as a web server and deploy an RDS instance. The core part of this lab is that we are working with RDS instance. Okay, we are deploying RDS, we are um, troubleshooting, we did some troubleshooting, we learned about security groups, we made some uh, subnet groups, and, and finally we made the um, RDS talk to our web server. And um, if you have any questions, post them in the comments, um, and I will be posting the description that has all the code. It is uh, a blog by Amazon Web Services and I did have some trouble while I followed it on the web and I thought I would make a video so that it would be easier for um, for you guys because yeah, I know I'm, I'm a visual person. I, I tend to learn easily from video. So I hope you, um, you learn something from this video. Uh, check out my other videos um, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.